What is your name and major and where are you from? My name is Scarlett Shaw. I am studying geology. I'm in a graduate program working on my PhD and I'm from San Antonio, Texas. What would you say is the most important number to you quantitatively or sentimentally? It's got to be 217. I was born at 217. There are just parts of my life where that number has popped up and sounds kind of crazy, but I do love that number. Cool. What is your proudest accomplishment? <laughs> That's a hard one. What is my proudest accomplishment? Probably I spent one summer working uh, on my rescue diver certification as well as working as a dive master in Honduras. And it was hard work physically and mentally, just given like rescue scenarios every day, as soon as you wake up morning and night and, and then working um, to try to accomplish tasks that I felt like would be life or death. Mm, that is pretty important stuff. On the back of that note, what is the biggest failure you're willing to share? I think as a graduate student, failure is part of the territory simply because there's this expectation that your self-worth is part of, your, your self-worth is defined by your productivity. So in that sense, I constantly feel like I'm failing, but I know that the burden is something that I put on myself rather than what should be put on me by academia. Oh, cool. So you feel like the fear of failure is constant due to the fact that you are in graduate studies. Right, yeah, in, in grad school and, and in some cases in undergrad too, where you feel like your grades mean everything or your success as a student means everything and defines what kind of job you'll get or what kind of career you'll be in. Um, that is, I feel like, a looming thing on everyone's minds. So I guess having been in graduate school for four years now, I feel that weight as a graduate student. And in what ways in your uh, time here at UT Austin have you found that out to be true or not true? I don't think graduate students should judge their, themselves by their productivity as a student. Um, and that was a tough lesson to learn and to watch other people go through. Mm, for sure. It is kind of tough to be a graduate student at UT Austin. Uh, what was kind of your journey uh, before you got to UT and started your current program? Um, so in undergraduate, I studied environmental science. And the catalyst for that was because I had a really great environmental science teacher in high school. Uh, she was a teacher in San Antonio and just made learning really fun and interesting. And that ultimately affected my trajectory. I actually applied to UT as a business major and before school even started I thought I, I knew that I would not be happy pursuing a degree in business so I ended up changing my degree to environmental science. Wow that's quite a pivot. Yeah I knew I wanted to be outside and it seemed like the, the best way to go about that. Would be to get a degree in environmental science. Yeah. Cool. And in a picture that you shared with us that exemplified a core memory of you at UT Austin, it was you and some friends here at UT Austin. We will show you that picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more about this picture? Yeah. I was part of a citizen science slash uh, UT rec sports organization called Longhorn Stream Team. And 
it was just one of the best decisions I had ever made because we would like as a group, you know, 14 or 15 of us, we would paddle down whitewater rapids down different rivers in Texas and New Mexico. And we felt like we had a purpose. We were taking water quality samples. We would publish that data online, make it available to the uh, Texas Commission of Environmental Quality. And it felt like just a really great way to build camaraderie and build appreciation for the outdoors and the sport of canoeing. Mm, beautifully said, beautifully said. I will further look. Huh. So through that experience and your many other story times here at UT Austin, what are some of your unintended learned lessons that you have discovered? Unintended learned lessons. Can you give me an example of something that you have learned unintentionally? What, what, what surprised you about UT Austin and being a student here? And what was like just as you expected? Hmm. I guess coming from a school that had maybe like 2,000 people or 3,000 people, uh, I really loved the anonymity of being out of school with 40,000 undergraduates. And <clears throat> in a time before COVID, there were just crowds and crowds of people. You're just kind of like a, a little head in a sea of people. And I really loved that, I guess, freedom to be myself. And where did you go before UT Austin? High school was? Mm -hmm. I went to Lady Bird Johnson, High School in San Antonio, Texas. Hooray. Shout out to the Lady Birds. Yeah. Johnson Jaguars. Johnson Jaguars. Yeah. Um, wow, that's um, one surprising thing about UT Austin, the anonymity. Unintended learned lessons. I'll give you an example. Like I was walking through campus and I realized that you could um, basically just kind of walk into class and professors would just like accept the fact that you were there. I guess that's an unintended learned thing. Mm. But unintended learned mm. lessons is that parking tickets rack up, man. That is an <laughs> unintentionally learned and will be well remembered lesson going forward because that is like, <laughs> man, oh man, do they rack up. Yeah. Do you ever um, kind of like look back in your life and you quantify things and you're like, oh, I could have done this with my time, this with my energy, this with my money. I think about that a lot with the parking tickets. <laughs> I could have avoided. Yeah. Um, what would you say is your cause on or off campus? I'll give you an example. One of the other interviewees, she is in a club called Students Against Animal Cruelty. She's a vegan. And that is her, her cause, to be against animal cruelty and the slogging of animals. Yeah. What do you think is a cause that's akin to that for you? There's so many to choose from. There's almost too many to choose from, given... I guess all of the issues that are going on are being made aware, everyone being made aware of. Um, one, that, one that means a lot to me is um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I'm part of this group. It's just a couple of friends. Um, we met during a teaching stint together and ended up deciding like we wanted to host some type of meeting, uh, a, a build up a task force and hold hold a conference for people of color in geoscience. I don't know if sort of like the people outside of geoscience are aware, but within this field, it's probably one of the least diverse uh, fields in STEM. So in the last 40 years, there hasn't been any changes in diversity. Um, and this group that we created was meant to kind of address the reasons for why that is. Oh, okay. That is very a very, very important issue at UT Austin. Um, UT Austin being a elite public school is a destination for 
high school students of Texas, and you can see the other lack of diversity in its more, more competitive uh, engineering and uh, cop side programs. I'm pretty sure this part is going to get edited out because one section, one idea behind this whole thing is that the mission office will be able to use these to like entice school to like want to come to like UT Austin. So I feel like this won't make the cut. Like, okay. Yeah. They're just going to, or, or they'll know that there are people working on this problem. And they'll who be care like, about yes, it. please <laughs> let me go to UT Austin. Okay. Now we're going to figure out like good things to say about UT Austin. Okay. That will make us want to include us. What are some like just stunningly awesome aspect about UT and about living in Austin? Okay, I'll answer the first question. What's what's great about UT Austin as a school? There are so many resources. There's clubs that you can join. <laughs> oh my god. Don't include this. I just learned that there was like a furries club recently uh -huh. at UT. Um, but yeah, there's such a variety of clubs that you can join at UT. There's a wealth of resources of smart people, of professors, graduate students, faculty, staff, researchers, other students, other undergraduates who have so many different experiences and knowledge bases that they're willing to share. And that I really, really enjoyed as an undergraduate and as a graduate student, getting to meet people from a bunch of different places, different countries, different cultures, and getting to bond over some mutual uh, similarity. All right. Do you want to give Easy Company a shout out? Yeah, shout out to Easy Company, which what? is our climbing group. <laughs> climbing at Crux Fitness every yeah. Thursday and Saturday. A couple graduate students and also a UT alum who come to Crux and climb together. That level of community is just fun and beneficial for everyone indeed indeed unless we don't wake up and then we'll yeah just... unless we don't wake up <laughs> well unless i don't wake up <laughs> okay um how much boss energy do you think you exert on a day-to-day -day basis i didn't think that would actually make it into the i thought it was like in parentheses how much boss energy i yeah i don't know like how, how much would would you say you deserve though if you had to say, if you had to say, if your life was on the line. See, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no conception. I don't know if I'd be able to answer that question for you. Mm, okay. <laughs> now, looking forward, what would you like to say to future potential UT students, undergrads, graduate students, people specifically studying in the School of Geoscience? What is, like, your advice to them or like a farewell to them that you would like to share with us as someone who has had the experience of the undergraduate and the graduate sort of time here at ut i would say use your time wisely there's a lot of hours in the day and even though you may feel pressure or guilt to work on your assignments or have like straight A's, get a 4.0 GPA. Life experiences are just as important. So getting internship experience, getting experience period is really essential. And getting engaged. Uh -oh. <laughs> and getting engaged. <laughs> Dude, I'm always, okay, this is not gonna make it into the cut, but I always like tell people about how Tyler dug out a piece of sapphire oh. and made it into a ring. Yeah. And now all of my female friends' boyfriends hate me because they're like, how are we supposed <laughs> to match up to that story? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or they could take a lesson from it and go out to Montana and start digging. Oh my God. Oh, I, I told everyone it was New Mexico. No, it was Montana. Montana's where sapphires, where a lot of sapphires are. But sapphires they, could like find, uh, yeah. they could find garnets in New Mexico. See, this is why everyone, every aspiring proposee need a friend like Scarlett <laughs> to tell her where, like, the good rocks are. I got you. Yes. I got you. I really like the second camera look, too. Yeah, I will. Stop that, and we're going to have to shoot a couple stills. Okay. Ugh! You got the balance. Yes. I'm very impressed. It's very impressive. 
wow, what can you, what, what can I say? When you're an impressive person, there's nothing, there's nothing really you can do to like become unimpressive. You can look at this camera too. Cheers. Okay. I think we're actually good. Oh, that was a wrap. All right. I'll show you something.